Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. So today is the first video in a new series on my channel and I'm starting the Nail Art 101 series because um, even before I developed my deeply serious relationship with nail polish, um, my first love was actually nail art and I've been thinking lately that I really wanted to get back into more nail art and I thought what a better way to do it than to really brush up on some of the basic um, techniques that you use a lot of times in um, different nail arts and a good way for me to brush up on those is to go over them with you. So that's what this series is going to be about. It's going to be me walking through these techniques for you but also very much for myself as well. So I thought that we should probably start at the beginning. So today's video, um, we're going to go over the very basic, um, you know, very basic idea of how to best paint your nail. I get this question actually a lot, you know, how do I paint my nail so cleanly and evenly and how um, do I clean up so nicely for my pictures? How do I take a nice picture? Questions like that. So. As you will have probably already figured out, the pictures that you're looking at right now are of nail art. I'm just kind of showing you some of them of my own um, designs because I wanted you to have something to look at while we were talking. Some of these I am more happy with and some of them, um, you know, are definitely show that I have a lot of work to do. My way of just showing you, you know, I am not um, technically um, proficient with nail art. I am definitely growing and learning all the time just like you and um, you know there are definitely things that I can stand to um, improve of course and so anyway I just wanted to have you <laughs> some stuff for you to look at while I was talking to you about this. So today we're going to just look at um, we're just going to talk about how to paint your nail. So for me of course when I first started painting my nails I got it all over my nail. I got it flooding into my cuticle um, and sometimes even when you see on my swatches on my live application that sometimes still happens and that will happen if you just have a um, polish that has a formula that's a little bit trickier to work with however um, as as it does with nail art um, practice makes perfect as it does with anything and the same goes for just simply painting your nails so the more that you paint your nails the better you will get at it and since what I do here on YouTube is constantly swatch and constantly do live application for you guys. Um, it wouldn't, it wouldn't really be, um, you know, very prudent of me to just swatch all over my hand all the time, so that I had a ton of cleanup to do afterwards. So I have, of course, learned how to kind of keep the nail polish kind of coloring within the lines for the most part so that I don't have a ton of cleanup to do after. So that's the first basic thing to know is that, you know, if you're, the more careful you are with your application, the better, you know, the less um, cleanup you're going to have to do afterwards. But I'm going to go over cleanup as well too because I do have to clean up. Um, some, some of my swatch photos I don't have to clean up at all and that is usually because a nail polish just has a really good formula. But I usually do have a little bit of cleanup to do and we will go over that. So today um, we're going to be just simply painting our nails first with this Essie shade from their um, spring line this year. It's called Shade On, just a beautiful color of purple. Okay, so you will hear oftentimes in the polish community about the three stroke method. And what that means is simply making three general strokes with the polish. Down one side, down another side, and then one across the middle. Or some people will do across the middle and then side to side. It just depends on which, you, which way you feel better with. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and tackle that. And then the other thing that you can do to make not make quite as much of a mess is when you paint, you can start your brush about here and then you put your brush there, you push slightly forward towards your cuticle and then you bring your brush back. And that's gonna make it so you flood your cuticle a little bit less. You may have already noticed that as you watch my videos, but I have never just explained that before. So we're gonna go ahead and just paint our nails right now. So like I said, so here I am, I'm right there up and up next to the cuticle and I'm pushing forward just a little bit and I, I tend to do more than just the three stroke method. Um, I don't know if I have larger fingernails. 
They're not super large, but I, I can't always just get away with a three stroke. But if you have a really good formula on a nail polish sometimes, and also Essie brushes are not the best for three stroke method because they're smaller. But sometimes, um, you know, you can get that three stroke. For me, I don't, I don't tend to hold myself just to the three strokes, but as you can see, it got on the whole nail pretty well and I didn't really make a mess or anything. Thank you to the Essie formula. Um, but also just a lot of practice. So I'm going to keep going here and um, paint the rest of them. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So I'm going to go in here and then push forward a little bit and come back. That's going to just give you a little bit more manageability over your, um, you know, your cuticle line. You don't really want to flood that too much. So, and yes, my fourth finger is still very stained thanks to that Wet n Wild green polish and that will happen um, especially if you swatch and wear nail polish as much as I do um, and I don't always wear a base coat I should wear it more often I make sure to wear it more often when I know I'm going to be wearing a very pigmented blue or green for um, you know more than a day or even even if it's more than just like an hour I will do that so this polish is so nice. Um, what you saw me do just now was I, I think I had subconsciously realized that there was a little bit too much polish on my nail. So what I did was I took it and I brushed a little bit off here at the front part of the nail and then I went in here next to the cuticle and pulled back. So anyway, this polish is so nice that the, the formula is so nice that I'm really not having to work hard to get this to go where I want but you can't always rely on um, a polish's formula to give you that ease of manageability, give you that nice of a formula where you only have to do one coat. So these basics that I'm talking about right here are going to give you your best bet across all your nail polishes. So I actually could probably just do one coat with this polish, huh? but this, fir this first nail here has two coats. So anyway, for sake of time, I'm not gonna go ahead and do coats with the rest. We're now going to talk about cleanup. So um, I have these brushes here that I picked up from e.l.f. and I have heard these mentioned um, probably by a number of other um, YouTubers and bloggers as being good brushes for cleanup. Sorry, this is the e.l.f. Professional Concealer Brush. This is just like a dollar or something at Walmart. These two brushes in particular, um, sometimes my son plays with them and so they don't get super thin, but normally they're very nice and thin to where they're gonna be able to get right next to your cuticle line and not mess up your work. As you're looking at mine here, you're probably thinking, wow, that's really not going to be thin enough. But these are really, really cheap, so I pick them up like quite often whenever I see them. But we're gonna make it work for today. And then the other thing that I have here is my really nice and used, I just have a cotton uh, felt pad that I um, cut for myself. You will find them on my Strap Envy store. I cut for myself these felt pads and then I have this acetone holder that I got from Sally's and it's really nice and used just as everything is in my, um, in my nail station. And inside I have pure acetone. So for when I take off my nail polish, I use Nourishing um, Polish Remover, but for me, I can't really get my um, my nails around my cuticles quite as clean with anything other than acid, a straight acetone, pure acetone, which I get from Sally Beauty Supply. Here is how it looks. Let's zoom out. It looks like this, okay? And they have one that says pure acetone, and then they have one that says um, just acetone, or you can pick up any nourishing acetone uh, nail polish remover or non-acetone nail polish remover just for removing your nails um, in general. Not removing your nails, of course, removing your nail polish. So, um, but yes, for this step, I need to use, for me personally, I need to use pure acetone because otherwise it takes too long and I can't get as precise and crisp of a line as I would like. So I'm gonna zoom in again here. Okay, so as you can see, there was not a ton for me to do here to clean up. I am gonna just clean up this side right over here. So the thing about pure acetone is it's of course gonna be very drying. So you need to make sure that, see as you can see that just really easily for me, that's all I had to do. And um, as you can see, my nails do get dry here along the sides because I use, um, you know, pure acetone. 
and you just want to, you need to just make sure you're hydrating, hydrating, hydrating. As soon as you're done applying your nail polish, you hydrate. I mean, we're going through some really, um, we went through a really dry winter, so everybody's nails are probably just wrecked right now, even if you're not constantly applying nail polish. But that's really all I do. I swipe around the cuticle and um, see, how, see how the line there is just slightly jagged? For my pictures, I just I just want to eliminate that. I just want to I just want to make it as clean as it can be for the pictures, just so that it's not distracting to the eye. So if you're looking to start taking pictures, this is really all I do. I don't doctor my photos in any way, unless, um, as you can see, of course, this needs another coat here on the edge. I'm noticing, but for the sake of this video, we didn't really need two coats, so. Um, I don't doctor my photos in any way unless I have noticed that the color didn't pick up quite correctly on the camera and then I will sometimes um, change the temperature on my, um, when I'm in my editing software. But other than that, I don't doctor my photos. I don't, you know, go in there with any kind of software and try to make my hands look nice or anything. What you see is, you know, what you get is what you get. What you see is what you get. So anyway, that is all I do. So this little brush, just clean it up around the edges and that is it. And as you can see, it's nice and dry around there. So then oftentimes what I will do, it's really good to invest in some good cuticle care. I'm gonna show you a few that I really like. So this one is so easy from e.l.f., okay? So this is the e.l.f. Nourishing Cuticle Pen. This is so easy because, um, I don't know about you, but some, I don't know, there's something about this kind of marker edge on a pen, so I can just go in, like right after I am done, right before I do my swatches, and you just go like this, and it's just, it's just so easy. And it doesn't flood your nail with too much oil like um, another product like this, for example, could possibly do. I really, really enjoy this product as well. This is pretty serious. Cuticle, uh, cute cuticles in bubblegum scent. Oh my goodness, I love how this smells. I just put it on all the time. Um, there's, a, there's a lot out there. I also have Nail Nation 3000. This is in the scent Warm Vanilla. I tend to not really enjoy the citrusy ones very much, but as you can see there, that cuticle pen, um, for everyday kind of wear, that that kind of glossy glare does not bother me or concern me at all. When I am taking photos, however, I don't really like the distracting look of that, so I'll nourish it up really nice with something like this or a cuticle oil, and then I'll just massage it into my skin a little bit right before I um, take the photo. So that is pretty much it. Um, I would totally, if I were you, invest in some of these um, concealer brushes from e.l.f. and this e.l.f. Nourishing Cuticle Pen makes my life really, really easy. Um, and then some cuticle oil, and I, I'm really enjoying this one from Pretty Serious right now. And they have a lot of scents. So um, let's see. Let's see if there's anything else you need to know. I'm gonna show you really quick my photo taking setup. All right, so here is my light box. This is just a really um, inexpensive light box kit that you can purchase on Amazon. It comes with a number of different colored backgrounds here. Uh, my favorite is, I think, the black, but I'm using the blue right now because the black got a little bit dirty. <laughs> I think somebody spilled something on it. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, so, it, and then it just has these three sides to it and that is my Canon Rebel uh, T3i in there that I take all my pictures with. However, if you have um, a phone, like my Samsung takes pretty good pictures on that too. So you don't need um, a camera like this, but I do really enjoy it for my pictures. The kit came with these little lights for the side that burn incredibly hot by the way. Um, but I just turn them on and I take my pictures in there and it usually turns out pretty good. So that is my setup for taking pictures. Sorry that the cars are being noisy right now. And, um, yeah, I hope that's helpful to you. Basically, I just, um, turn all the lights on and put my hand in this box in here. Get this as close as it will let me get to my hand. I just hold my hand like this and take a picture with the... Um, polish in my hand. So that's about it guys. I hope you find that helpful and I will try to link in the description bar where I got this light box kit. Actually Tim got it for me a number of years ago so I'm going to try to look for that. 
So I think that's going to be it for this first video. Just simply practice um, painting. Just the more you do it, the more you will get comfortable with it. And I'm actually probably a pretty good example um, to talk about shakiness when you're painting. Some of you might experience shakiness while you're painting. I actually um, have MS and epilepsy. So I actually probably experience more shakiness than um, just the regular person but it's also just another thing that you just practice. So I actually, I shake a, quite a bit sometimes and you just, you know, you maybe take a little break um, and you just you study your hand. One really good thing is to make sure you're always studying your wrist on the table. I'm not showing you very well right now, but studying your wrist on the table while you're painting is a really good um, thing to do. And also of course, having a good steady spot for your painting hand. So. I think that's all that we're gonna talk about today. I hope you join me back for the next video in this series. The next thing we are going to be talking about is Dotacure. So simple, um, simple Dotacure manicures um, that can be achieved with a dotting pin or you can even do it with a bobby pin or any other kind of small tip tool. Um, we're going to talk about how to do a simple dot cure and then how to turn it into more elaborate nail art. So I hope you join me back for that. Thanks for stopping by to spend some time with me today and always leave me comments if there's any specific technique that you would like me to talk about in the comment section or if you have any questions for me, leave them down there as well. Thank you for hanging out with me today, guys. I love you oh so much and I will see you back very soon. Bye. Just, I really recommend this one. So, love that. I mean, they have, there's the capacity to see beyond in there. There's the giver's theme I already showed you. And then lots and lots of nudes, like gray nudes. Like, are like a, it, they have a lot of like light off whites with just a little pinch of color in them. But anyway, this is, this is actually.